Hey, what's up everybody? This is Ryan Miller with Growth Stimulus Training. I'm just finishing up my pre-trained meal. It consisted of chicken breast and an Ezekiel bread peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And I wanted to bring to you um, a tutorial on the incline dumbbell bench press. The incline dumbbell bench press is an excellent supplement lift choice for your GST press day. And it's also a very common exercise choice when you're looking at focusing on your chest for weak point training. When we're looking at the muscles that are activated during the incline dumbbell press, you're looking at the pec muscles being the primary movers, and then you're looking at the front delts and the triceps being the secondary movers. Now many benches that you're going to use are going to be adjustable. Um, some gyms have the fixed angled bench, and that's typically set at a 45 degree angle. The 45 degree angle is a nice mix between chest, chest activation and front delt activation. I should point out that Essentially, regardless of which angle you choose to use, the tricep activation really is not going to change that much. Um, the triceps are important for the locking out portion of this movement, and that, that range of motion or that portion of the movement really isn't going to change based on bench angle. What does change in terms of bench angle is the degree to which the front delts are activated. Now, if you have a higher bench angle, the lift is going to start to resemble more and more of a military press, a military dumbbell press. And as the angle of that back pad of the bench rises, the front delt activation is actually going to increase. And vice versa, if you drop the angle of that bench below 45 degrees, you're basically going to be approaching a regular flat bench um, or a slight inclined bench press. And when you do that, you're going to be looking at a higher degree of pec activation versus front delt activation. Based on those facts, what I'd like you to do is consider the reason why you're using the incline press. Typically, someone's gonna choose the incline press because they're trying to focus on their chest, and normally they actually say that they're gonna focus on their upper chest. So in that case, you would not want that high of an angle because you would not want your primary movers to shift to the front delts. You wanna hit the pecs, but you wanna keep um, the incline in play being that it is the incline dumbbell press. For this reason, I'll typically do the 45 degree angle. I feel that it works great for me. I get a great pec squeeze. Um, I can focus in on the upper pecs, but truth be told, the entire pec muscle is being stimulated with every rep. Now that we've gone over the angle of the bench, it's important to figure out the proper setup procedure for your incline dumbbell bench press. What you wanna do is think about proper bench pressing techniques. You want to keep that spine tight. It's okay to have your mid back off the bench and you want your three contact points to be your feet on the floor, your hips on the bench, and then your upper back or your shoulder blade area on the upper bench. If you have a gap between the middle of your back and the bench, that's perfectly fine. It's nice to stay tight and it's actually recommended to have that gap so you can really pull those shoulder blades back, arch the, arch the entire spine, and focus in on those pec muscles when you're doing your reps. Now this matters because as you're sitting back into your incline dumbbell press, you actually have to lift the dumbbells back to the starting position yourself. And it's important that you try to maintain the arch in your back during that entire process. So right here, before you actually sit back, it's good to arch your chest or arch your back, push your chest out, and try to maintain that arch while you flip the dumbbells back. Then once you're in place, once you're sturdy and you have your three contact points in check, you can begin your reps. As you can see, reps are completed by starting at the point where your pec muscle intersects with your armpit and firing vertically to the top position. And that top position is essentially a straight arm position. Some people prefer to not reach complete lockout. I'm not one of those people. I believe in flexing the triceps at the top, pushing the weights high, but not pulling apart the shoulder blade muscles. So you wanna push them high, but not high enough where you actually lose that shoulder blade pinch. This particular range of motion should allow you to steady the dumbbells at the top of each rep. Um, that's done briefly, you briefly steady those dumbbells. This range of motion should also allow you to fully flex the pecs, achieving a great mind-muscle connection with your upper chest and your entire chest for that matter. The front delts, it's tough to get that mind-muscle connection with the front delts during the incline press because what you should really be focusing on is the pec muscles. If you can feel the front delts, that's excellent, but your mind-muscle connection should really be focused on those pecs. 
In terms of actual range of motion depth, it's important that you do achieve a nice pec stretch at the bottom of each rep. If you stop at the elbows bending um, 90 degrees, that's actually not going to give you a very ideal pec stretch and you're going to lose distance on your range of motion. Doing this really has no advantage um, in my opinion. It's basically the equivalent of a partial bench press or a partial squat. So if you're looking at the incline dumbbell bench press just for a basic conventional usage where you're not trying to focus on just a portion of the movement, it's important that you actually do complete the full range of motion. So remember that partial range of motion reps are only done to focus on a portion of the complete range of motion of an exercise. So if you want to work on the top half of the incline dumbbell press, you should not reach that point where your pec muscle intersects with your armpit. You should not go through that full range of motion. But for conventional usage, reach that full range of motion, achieve the pec stretch at the bottom of the rep, and drive the weights to the top of the rep, keeping the shoulder blades tight, maxing out the contraction of the pecs, and also squeezing the triceps as well. Okay, now one final point that I'd like to touch on is the question of whether or not to twist the dumbbells or rotate your wrists at the top of the rep. In my opinion, all this does is it gives you something else to think about that isn't necessary. When you're doing an exercise, ideally you actually want to think about as few tips and as few keys as possible. You don't want to overcomplicate the exercise and twisting or rotating the wrists at the top of each rep, especially with heavy dumbbells, is only going to give you another thing to think about. It's going to take away from the possibility of an increased mind-muscle connection with the pecs. And to be honest, in my opinion, it's a little bit unsafe. You want to lift with stability and rotation of those weights during the reps creates instability. Some might also say that twisting the dumbbells at the top of the motion is going to allow for an increased pec squeeze. Now, is this a reality? In my opinion, no, it's not. You're fighting the resistance through the range of motion of the incline dumbbell press vertically. The weights are lifted vertically, the pecs are contributing to that lift, and once they're at peak position, there really is no lateral resistance there. Gravity is pulling the weights back down, it is not pulling the weights laterally. So whether or not you bring those dumbbells in another inch or two by rotating the wrists and squeezing them together, um, that's going to matter very little, and even if you did do that, there's very little resistance there for the pecs to fight against in order to make that squeeze. So will it add um, extra pec flex? It's possible that you can flex your pecs a little bit harder, but are they under resistance and does that need to happen? No, it really doesn't. Once again, it's just another thing to think about and the pros of that rotating wrist method really are outweighed by the cons. All right, so I've gone over the ins and outs of the dumbbell bench press. I've covered everything from the angle of the bench to whether or not you should rotate your wrists at the top of each rep and everything in between. Now you can hit the gym, get the most out of your incline dumbbell bench presses, and benefit from this video. Once again, this has been Ryan Miller with Growth Stimulus Training.